Okay, want to pick up where we left off, and that's going to be a, regarding the definition and operation of a tenant. Now, like I said, a tenant extends to me a lot of functionality that I get whenever I need to be able to isolate individual users, networks, resources from one another. Not just network resources, but also policies. That's going to be one of the other important things that we need to look at. Now, what exactly does it do? Well, honestly, a tenant is going to, first of all, represent the sources of traffic that I want to isolate. So as an example, I could isolate one customer's traffic from another. I could choose to use a tenant to represent a customer in many different definitions. So for instance, a customer could actually be different clients in a multi-tenancy environment. In a multi-tenancy environment, I could use tenants to represent business units. In a multi-tenancy environment, I could use a tenant to represent one just individual group inside of a business unit from one another. So you can see it serves some significant purpose. And I like to compare it to a VDC, a virtual device context. Because what ends up happening is, is when I take something like a Nexus 7K, so let's just pretend this is an NX7010 chassis. And what I can actually do is I can take this device and I can actually subdivide it such that this physical chassis is actually pretending to be multiple switches using a concept called virtual device contexts. And at the end of the day, each one of these individual devices is going to behave as if it was a standalone Nexus 7K. Now in order to be able to, to have this function, what we end up doing is, is we will actually come into this device and we'll physically allocate interfaces to this device. Normally in my lab, since I have a F348 network card, those are going to be divided into groups of eight based on ASIC and a single ASIC must belong to the same VDC. But what I'll do is I'll actually come in here and I'll actually assign these interfaces via an interface allocation command. So interface allocation and then I'll define the interfaces. Let's just say this is Ethernet 1, I'm sorry, Ethernet 3, 1 through 8. That's been assigned to say VDC, we'll just call it number 1. Now Inside of this VDC, we have to recognize that I'm going to have protocol stacks. So I'm going to have a layer 2 protocol stack for Ethernet, and I'm going to have a layer 3 protocol stack for Ethernet. In fact, I'll have separate protocol stacks in each of these VDCs. Let's just say this is VDC number 1, number 2, number 3, and number four and each in each one of these I'm going to have both a layer two and a layer three protocol stack. Let's say in this guy right here in the layer two protocol stack let's say I create VLAN 10 and let's say I configure in the layer three protocol stack OSPF and let's say over here in this guy let's, I do the exact same thing I run OSPF and I create VLAN 10. Well the thing is is since these devices are actually isolated from one another inside of these VDCs they do not see one another until such time that I opt to take a cable from one of the interfaces that were allocated to this VDC and connect those two virtual device contexts together. At this particular juncture, these two devices do indeed become part of the same layer two infrastructure and the same layer three infrastructure. And the beauty of this is, is that if I have a problem whereby this instance of OSPF dies or crashes, keep in mind that the OSPF instance in any of these other devices, actually, uh, let's just say this one's four for the sake of argument, operates perfectly fine so we can see here we get this idea of 
isolation. Which is what tenants do for me as well as other things. As an example, since these devices are going to be isolated from each other, until such time that I choose to connect things together in, a, in the real world, what ends up happening is, is that I get the capability of being able to, one, reuse IP space. So I could have the same VLANs, excuse me, I could have the same networks running inside of separate tenants. And until such time that I connected them, logically or physically, those IP spaces would never conflict with each other because of this rule or this behavior of isolation that we're describing. It also provides what we refer to as separate profile spaces. And that's one of the things I want to talk about now. So we have this idea of providing a separate profile space. And this means we really need to take a look at what a tenant does indeed look like. Now remember, it's the very, very top object inside of the APIC policy model. And the moment that we create a tenant, think of it again like a container a box that you're going to put stuff in so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will actually call this my tenant in fact we'll give it a name just for so we can talk to it we'll just say tenant terry now the moment that i define tenant terry what we're going to find is i'm actually going to honestly be defining two subcontainers inside of tenant Terry. And for every tenant that I create, that those tenants will also have two subcontainers. In fact, this first subcontainer is going to be my network construct container. The second container is going to be my APIC policy container. So the network container is going to be where I'm going to define everything that functions in networking. So when I look at networks or networking in the context of the ACI, I'm looking at those layer two layer three functions, and I'm also looking at how I'm going to provide and what addressing I'm going to provide. So when we look at this right now, for the sake of our, our conversations, we're going to be dealing with IPv4 addressing. We're going to be dealing with VRFs, and we're going to be dealing with bridge domains. So if, again, if I were to break this up, this network subcontainer is actually going to contain the next highest mode container. So first of all, like I said, we have tenants. Tenants are going to contain VRFs. VRFs are going to contain one or more bridge domains. And our bridge domains are going to contain one or more subnets. And sub net B. Now that begs the question about the policy container. Well, if the network subcontainer contains the VRF, the bridge domains, and the subnets, it's safe to say that the networking container actually houses everything that defines the forwarding behaviors. However, keep in mind that I have to forward information for something. Well, the things that we're going to forward for and how they're going to forward is going to be defined in the policy subcontainer. Inside of the policy subcontainer, the highest object is referred to as my application profile. Now, my application profile is at the end of the day another container. 
because it's inside of the application profile that I'm going to define end point groups. So you can see here that the networking side of the tenant defines the forwarding mechanisms at both layer 2 and layer 3 and the networks that we're going to be forwarding for. The application policy at the end of the day is actually going to assign the end points that we're going to be applying these subnets and these bridge domains and these VRF services to. So when we start looking at the way this all plays out, we really need to, again, keep looking deeper in order to be able to discuss what each of these components do. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build tenants. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where we see the VRFs, the bridge domains, and the subnets inside those tenants, and where we see the policies. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return to the theoretical discussion, and we're going to walk through the definition, explanation, and functionality of each of these logical constructs that we've been talking about. Specifically, I'm talking about VRFs, bridge domains, subnets, application profiles, and the definition of endpoints. Then what we'll do is we'll actually build all of those out and then we'll return to our graphical outline and what we'll do is we will add the tenant constructs to the drawing that supports the switch policies and the interface policies that we previously defined. So with that being said, I'm Terry Vincent and I will see you guys in the console.